Hello, my name is Destiny Brown, and today I will be talking about my free fly report. But before we dive into everything, I will briefly describe everything that occurred within this lab. The main purpose of this lab was to learn more about the inheritance pattern of the Drosophila melanogaster. Ten fruit flies were used, half were wild-type female and the other half were apterous male. These flies were observed then placed into a single vial. This experiment was then carried out over a five-week period. Each week the offsprings were observed. However, during week three all the flies had died, so a new batch had to be made. When the experiment was concluded, it was apparent that the apterous mutation was autosomal recessive. And the brown eye color was also autosomal recessive. This experiment was hypothesized to follow Gregor Mendel's law of genetics. It all began with a man called Thomas Hunt Morgan. Before he became a great geneticist, he worked anonymously alongside his assistant. He was a hard worker, and he only believed in physical proof when it came to his work. Morgan first gained interest in heredity when he visited his friend Hugo de Vries. This friend essentially said that organisms went through mutation periods that resulted in their children having different traits. On his way home, Morgan knew that he had to test his theory out for himself. Upon reaching he quickly got to work. He did not have time to play around. In his lab he pondered on what animals he could experiment on. He eventually experimented on a variety of animals, such as pigeons, pigs, etc. However, he quickly discovered those experiments were no good as they took too much time. However, Morgan quickly discovered those experiments were no good as they took too much time. He then decided to experiment on fruit flies. These flies quickly proved to be great because they were cheap to maintain, had fast life cycles, and laid eggs every 12 days. After many experiments Morgan discovered a mutated fly. This fly had white eyes. He then singled out the fly and mated it with a wild type. A wild type is a trait that is considered normal. When the flies mated the F1 generation which is the first generation of offsprings, were all wild type. However, 
In the F2 generation 25% of the offsprings had white eyes. By doing these experiments Morgan was able to find out about sex linkage which is when a trait is located on the sex chromosome. He also learned more about traits that lie on autosomal chromosomes, which is when a trait can be on every chromosome except the sex chromosomes. Because of these findings Morgan eventually won a Nobel Peace Prize for his findings. He could now consider himself a successful geneticist. Furthermore, this specific lab included 10 fruit flies. Five of them were wild-type female and the other five were apterous male. It was determined that the apterous phenotype was recessive. Phenotype means a physical trait, whereas recessive means that a trait is masked due to a dominant trait. A dominant trait is the phenotype that is physically expressed. The dominant trait in this lab was the wild type. This experiment was hypothesized to follow along with Gregor Mendel's law of genetics. These laws include dominance, segregation and independent assortment. Dominance meaning that a trait will be physically expressed. Segregation meaning that two similar LS will be separated during cell division. Well independent assortment is when LS will get placed into a sex cell independently. Following closely to Morgan's experiment we set out to find out more about the mutations that can occur in the drosophila material that are needed to make media for the fruit flies are a vial, one scoop full of media, one scoop full of water and approximately four to six grains of yeast. Then ten fruit flies in total are needed for the experiment. In week two the materials needed were flint app, a brush, a wand, a microscope, and a paper to place the full eyes on. The vial was placed on the side and gently tapped until all the flies were on one side of the vial. The wand was then dipped into the flint app. The pad was pushed back and the wand was inserted into the vial. Pad was readjusted. The wand was left in the vial for three minutes slash until the flies were knocked out. When the flies were knocked out the wand was taken out. A napkin was obtained, and the flies were placed on it. The flies were taken out of the vial using a tweezer and brush. The larvae were left in the container. The flies that were taken out of the vial were observed then discarded into a morgue container. These are the results for week 1. Shown are fruit flies under a microscope. Week 1 continued. Picture of Week 2 Vial Week 3 Results Zero Female Apterus and Weld Type Zero Male Apterus and Weld Type The vial during week three. F1 progeny during week four. Three females with red eyes. Four males with brown eyes. One male with red eyes. Picture of week four flies. F2 progeny during week 5, 19 females had eyes, 24 males had red eyes. Week 5 pictures of F2 progeny. In conclusion it appears that the apterous mutant of the G, melanogaster is autosomal recessive to wild-type wings. 
In the peak generation all the wild type females had wings, however, the Apterus mutants did not. When they muted all of the F1 progeny produced head wings, which indicated that this trait could not be sex-linked because the trait was prevalent in both genders. This cross indicates this. When the F2 progeny were hatched, a majority of the flies still had wings, however a small portion of the flies had no wings. This cross represents the F2 progeny. In addition, brown eye color is also autosomal recessive to the wild type. In the F1 progeny all the females plus one male had red eyes. The rest of the males had brown eyes. When the F2 progeny were produced every single fly had red eyes. The cross indicates this. Errors in lab experiment. During this lab it appeared as if we started off with wild type female and sepia males. However, due to the fruit flies dying in week 3 we ended up needing a new batch of flies. In which, we received wild type females and apterous males. I adjusted the research using the fly data provided. Also, another error that could have been made was not adding enough water into the media. This could explain why there were no F1 progeny during week 3. In order to improve this experiment, it could be done again to see if the results will remain the same or become different.